What's up, cool people? I'm Matt Conroy. Welcome back to our Bible study. All right. So now we're at Exodus 25. Uh, Lord gave some instructions to Moses. Uh, other elders are now on the mountain worshiping God as Moses gets further instructions. And that's pretty much where we're at. So anyway... Exodus 25, here we go. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to bring me their sacred offerings. Accept the contributions from all whose hearts are moved to offer them. Here is a list of sacred offerings you may accept from them. Gold, silver, and bronze. Blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Fine linen and goat hair for cloth. Tanned ram skins and fine goat skin leather. Acacia wood olive oil for the lamps, spices for the anointing oil and the fragrant incense, onyx stones and other gemstones to be set in the ephod of the priest's chest piece. Have the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary so I can live among them. You must build this tabernacle and its furnishings exactly according to the pattern I will show you. Okay, so this is... God getting into the tabernacle and what it's going to be used for, how it's supposed to be built, significance of it, um, and I guess because of just the way this is laid out here, the contributions that are mentioned are probably supposed to be for the tabernacle. So, so all these things, I mean, the last one is real specific. So, and, and I think I recall all of these being part of different pieces of the tabernacle, essentially. Um, I'm sure that'll become more obvious as we move along here. So anyway... Um, all that to say, yeah, instructions for the tabernacle uh, is going to be the focus right here. Maybe even in a couple of the following chapters, but definitely for this one. So anyway, uh, it's moving on to verse 10. Have the people make an ark of acacia wood, a sacred chest, 45 inches long, 27 inches wide, and 27 inches high. Overlay it inside and outside with pure gold, and run a molding of gold all around it. Cast four gold rings, and attach them to its four feet, two rings on each side. Make poles from acacia wood, and overlay them with gold. Insert the poles into the rings at the sides of the ark to carry it. These carrying poles must stay inside the rings. Never remove them. When the ark is finished, place inside it the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, which I will give you. Okay, so... For a second there, I almost thought, you know, when the word ark was used, my mind went back to, you know, like, Noah's ark. But, no, this is a different thing, and I don't think this would have looked like that arc. I mean, there there are... I'm pretty sure there are pictures of what the Ark of the Covenant actually looks like, or at least what it was supposed to look like. Um, but also, lots of gold involved in this. Overlay it inside and outside with pure gold, and then a gold molding all around. Four gold rings... Overlay the the poles with gold, like good grief, this stuff would be worth a fortune. I, but ultimately, it's one of those things that's priceless because it's like a very important sacred item. Uh, let me check the footnotes here. This is probably going to be about the dimensions. 
Hebrew says 2.5 cubits long and then 1.5 cubits wide and high. So yeah, uh, that was just their estimation of, you know, the converting cubits to inches. So it was nearly four feet one way and then about two and a quarter feet wide and high. And no, this is not meant to be like <laughs> those little hand gestures I did was not those were not meant to represent the dimensions of this item at all. It would be much bigger than what I just motioned out. Um Footnote B, uh, Hebrew says, place inside the Ark the testimony, which, again, was just kind of what they called the stone tablets. So, uh, Hebrew word for testimony refers to the terms of the Lord's covenant with Israel as written on stone tablets, and also to the covenant itself. <clears throat> so, yeah, that that was so. So God was basically just saying that okay, one of the things that's going to be inside the Ark of the Covenant is going to be the stone tablets that have the covenant itself and the you know the terms of the covenant, so to speak. Because I mean. It wouldn't really be the Ark of the Covenant if the Covenant was not within it. Anyway, um, moving on to verse 17. Then make the Ark's cover the place of atonement from pure gold. It must be 45 inches long and 27 inches wide. Then make two cherubim from hammered gold and place them on the two ends of the atonement cover. Mold the cherubim on each end of the atonement cover, making it all of one piece of gold. The cherubim will face each other and look down on the atonement cover. With their wings spread above it, they will protect it. Place inside the ark the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, which I will give you. Then put the atonement cover on top of the ark. I will meet with you there and talk to you from above the atonement cover between the gold cherubim that hover over the Ark of the Covenant. From there I will give you my commands for the people of Israel. So, really, uh, probably the main idea of the, the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant and that sort of thing is to have an established meeting place where God would give his commands because, like, it would be insane. Well, maybe not insane, but it would be far more difficult and, you know, essentially separate God from his people if they would have to meet at Mount Sinai every time that they wanted instructions from God. So, um... So they talked about the Ark itself, um, but apparently the cover for it is pretty much just, I, I guess, like a mostly flat piece that just kind of rests on top. Um, and then there's going to be the cherubim that'll be looking upon it, and between those cherubim... It's that that's where God essentially will, you know, reside, so to speak, and, you know, communicate with his people whenever they seek him. Um, and of course, as we discussed, the, the tablets. The stone tablets are going to go inside the Ark of the Covenant. Then the cover is going to go on there. Also, again, more gold. And the fact that... 
so the, so the cherubim are actually part of the cover because it says it's all one piece of solid gold, both the cover and the cherubim. Which, that's got to take some work to pull off. I guess, I guess that in theory the cherubim could have worked all, like as sort of handles for the cover. Eh. <clears throat> I don't know. Anyway, uh, footnotes here. Again, with the measurements... And then footnote D, Ark of the Testimony, yeah. Because again, Testimony, Covenant, kind of, I mean, the Hebrew says Testament. Or Testimony, whatever. It, it, anytime that the word Covenant is used here, essentially. It, it, like, if it's referring specifically to, you know, the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments and all that kind of stuff, that that was what they referred to as the, the testimony, whereas, you know, we tend to call it the covenant. Okay, verse 23. Then make a table of acacia wood, 36 inches long, 18 inches wide, and 27 inches high. Overlay it with pure gold and run a gold molding around the edge. Decorate it with a three-inch border all around, and run a gold molding along the border. Make four gold rings for the table and attach them at the four corners next to the four legs. Attach the rings near the border to hold the poles that are used to carry the table. Make these poles from acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Make special containers of pure gold for the table. Bowls, ladles, pitchers, and jars to be used in pouring out liquid offerings. Place the bread of the presence on the table to remain before me at all times. Uh, so was the bread of the presence supposed to be like the bit of manna that was kept? I think, maybe? Because <laughs> otherwise it would be some other bread that I'm just not recalling what it is. Um... I guess that could have just been bread that would have been part of some of the offerings and such. But anyway, I, I, I feel like it would be more relevant in significance for that to be the manna that was saved. But anyway, um, footnote there about the dimensions. Two cubits by one cubit by 1.5 cubits. Um, a three-inch border... Hebrew says a hand breadth rather than because it would have been shorter than even a cubit. Um, okay, that takes care of the footnotes. Again, lots more gold being used um, to overlay the table. Um, Now, this table, I guess, uh, doesn't really say exactly what this table is supposed to be used for as of yet, but I, I, I'm sure it has something to do with, like, you know, the offerings and other things like that, because the gold containers are also supposed to go with the table, you know, the, the bowls, ladles, pitchers, and jars that are meant to be used for liquid offerings. So, that, obviously it has something to do with the offerings. Um, but yeah. I guess these instructions are really specific because they have to be. And also, like, all that gold... Is all that gold coming from, you know, the contributions of the people? I guess that's kind of... I guess that's also a big part of the reason why they got all the gold and jewelry and those kinds of things from the Egyptians as they left. Because God had plans for, for this. 
Anyway, hey, moving on to verse 31, and I guess that'll wrap up the chapter then. Make a lampstand of pure hammered gold. Make the entire lampstand and its decorations of one piece. The base, center stem, lamp cups, buds, and petals. Make it with six branches going out from the center stem, three on each side. So, Is that saying stem or... I guess it's sometimes sometimes M's look more like an R and an N to me. But anyway, um, each of the six branches will have three lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. Craft the center stem of the lampstand with four lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. There will also be an almond bud beneath each pair of branches where the six branches extend from the center stem. The almond buds and branches must all be of one piece with the center stem, and they must be hammered from pure gold. Then make the seven lamps for the lampstand, and set them so they reflect their light forward. The lamp snuffers and trays must also be made of pure gold. You will need 75 pounds of pure gold for the lampstand and its accessories. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. So, even that alone, 75 pounds of pure gold. Uh, in Hebrew, it says a talent. Which was, I guess, you know, their unit of weight. Um, you also hear other places in the Bible where a talent is referred to as, like, you know, money. But it was just because, you know, the money that they used was often either silver or gold or something like that. Some sort of, you know, precious metal or other similar, you know, material. And, and, and so because they already knew that it was supposed to be made of silver generally speaking they could just say oh well it's this much weight of silver therefore here's the value of it um but anyway so the lamp stand first of all it's all supposed to be made of one piece good grief like like it seems like that would make the process so much harder to make all this of one piece, but I guess part of that was maybe supposed to be, well, A, because, you know, they worship one God who is not divided, but also B, because, you know, having it all of one piece would probably help a bit more with the integrity of it, because if you had to, like, essentially weld the different pieces of it together, those weld spots are likely to be a bit weaker than the rest of it. Um, which I don't know if it exactly would have been welding in those days, but same idea. Um, so the lampstand is... It, essentially a very floral looking thing, which I hadn't really realized before. Um, haven't exactly, you know, looked up pictures specifically of the lampstand. But I mean, it keeps talking about, you know, branches going out from the center stem. Stem, you know, being plant-like. Branches being plant-like. And then it talks about, you know, almond blossoms being the general shape, complete with buds and petals. So, yeah, this is essentially like one plant-looking, just a big plant-looking thing, molded out of 75 pounds of pure gold that um, it, it, it is used to have their lamps slash candles upon, you know, whenever they going into the tabernacle to do things with the offerings and or, um, you know, 
speak with, pray to, hear from God. So, yeah, um, that whole chapter basically was about, I mean, the first few verses were just, you know, God saying, okay, here's what you're going to need to get from the people, and then after that, it was all, like, stuff for the tabernacle, specifically things for, like, the offerings and or, you know, Again, the, the, the prayers. Um, so anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for chapter 25. Okay, so um, a lot of instructions related to the tabernacle and, uh, you know, the Ark of the Covenant and... It sounds like a lot of work is going to have to go into this, but do uh, we still have plenty of, you know, instructions to get through, just generally speaking? Anyway, um, so I, it really, you might consider this, you know, God laying the foundation for future, you know, worship and communication. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's it for now. As always, like and share if you enjoyed. Subscribe and click the bell to get updates. Look down in the description for more social media info. And leave comments below all that with any thoughts you have. So that's going to do it for now. I uh, hope you're all doing well. Hopefully I'll see you for the next chapter. But until then, stay cool, people.